in talking about Bible characters starting with Jesus Sunday morning and Stephen Sunday night, Ananias, or Moses on Monday night, and last night Ananias, and tonight Philip. Now we're not just preaching these lessons to find out about these men, but to make application and improve in the areas that we need to improve. We started out with Jesus, our perfect example, and you couldn't start out with a more perfect example than He. And the reason that we want to make application of these lessons is so that we know, as Solomon said, the way of the transgressor is hard. And if you want to find out just how hard you go the way of the devil... And I want to tell you all the tears that you may shed and all the wishes that you may wish that you could go back and undo what you've done will not happen. You don't get a do-over. There's no delete button. There's no erasure. Except the blood of Christ. He will forgive us of our sins when we do what He says. When we are obedient to His commandments. But then and only then. And so we warn constantly from this pulpit, from J.R.'s bulletin, and I hope that you not only read the back where the sick are listed, but I hope that you read the front page and the inside articles that are so well written to encourage us and to warn us, to warn you, so tonight we talk about a man that we've entitled the lesson the, the table server, Philip. But we want to read a little bit about him in Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 7. Now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, wouldn't that be great? And there's some congregations where they are multiplying, but it's, it's not by luck. It's not by swelling, it's by growing. We call swelling when mo members move in. Growing is when we teach the lost and they obey the gospel. There arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists, the King James says, by the Grecian widows. Because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Well, why was there a need of a daily distribution? Well, on the day of Pentecost, the Feast of the Pentecost, the Passover, there were Jews out of every nation under heaven. And when the gospel began to be preached there in Jerusalem, just like Jer or Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 2, and like Jesus said it would in Luke chapter 24, verse 47, that these Jews stayed and uh, many of the faithful Christians sold what they had and Barnabas as you recall in Acts chapter 4 sold some land and gave it the amount to the apostles and let them distribute to those who were in need then in chapter 5 we see Ananias and Sapphira who tried to pull a little trick and within an hour or two or three they both were dead so they did, not, they did not lie only to man, they lied to God, as Peter said in Acts chapter 5. So they tried the hard way and they lost. And if that's the way you choose, you will lose. So the daily distribution wasn't being made to these Grecian widows. Verse 2. Then the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude. Now elders know that sometimes you make a decision and sometimes it doesn't please the whole multitude, does it? That's the way it ought to be. I need to know that they are the overseers. They're the bishops. They're the shepherds of the flock. And if I don't get my way, 
So what? Unless they're doing something unscriptural. But if it is not, if it is according to God's will, then I need to just keep my mouth shut and not cause strife. The whole multitude was pleased. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith, and the Holy Spirit, as we talked about Sunday evening. And Philip and Prochorus, Nicanor and Timon, Parmenas and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Now that is something, a, a great comment here. Many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Those were Jews under the Old Testament, Old Testament priests. And they brought them out of that into, the, into Christianity through the hearing and the obedience of the word. So tonight, I don't know how bright that is where y'all can see it. I guess you can, big enough. Philip, a table server. Do we want to learn some things about him? Tonight, I hope that we can. The many outstanding characters, both Old and New Testaments, who didn't have much of a beginning, who had rather hard lives, and you can just about go all the way through the Old, as my aunt used to say, your Old Bible and your New Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, and find characters just like this. Onesimus was a slave. Everybody didn't have it easy. People say, oh, you become a Christian and God's going to take care of all of your problems. Financially, physically, everything's just going to float real easy for you. Oh, we know that's not so. That's not what the Lord promised us, is it? Not a rose, uh, rosy trail. Dorcas, she didn't use her million. She just used her little needle, didn't she? To help others. And that's, what we ought to be looking at and all, what, what we can do. So we talked about Ananias, a certain disciple. The Lord used him and he can use you and he can use me. Philip is a man with an obscure background. We don't know much about him except for the conditions that the apostles laid down and then we find out as we just read there in those seven verses what kind of a man Philip was. His greatness was in his character. We know the, the conditions that we'll talk about here. Wisdom is shown in the choice of the men that were, the seven men that were chosen here in Acts chapter 6. Many are not willing to serve tables. I told you, I think about a, one of the members in Peoria where my dad was an elder. He always wanted something. Said he was all so disgusted because they didn't give him anything to do. And then when they gave him something to do, it wasn't what he wanted to do. What he wanted to do was before everybody. He was kind of like Naaman. Behold, I thought. I thought the prophet would come out and do, do something. Wave his hand over the sore. And heal the leprosy. And even his own servant, when Naaman turned away, his, his servant said, Master, if the prophet had bid you some, do some bit great thing, would you not have done it? And inside he was shaking his head this way. Yes, that's what I was looking for. But the Lord doesn't always work in our ways, does it? His thoughts are not our thoughts, Isaiah 55 tells us. So we learn a little bit about Philip and his resume. We talk about resumes to go going to get a job. What's on your resume? What about your resume for going to heaven? How long would the list be? What could be said about you? <coughs> Truthfully. Maybe somebody else ought to fill it out for you. <laughs> I know what I'd like to put on a resume before God and just leave off all the bad. Wouldn't that be nice? Here, God, here's what, here's what I want you to see. That doesn't work that way, does it? In Proverbs chapter 15 and verse 3, Behold, the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good that you do and that I do. Not only the evil, not only the good, but both of them. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, he says he's going to bring everything into judgment. Everything? Yes, everything. So Philip was a table server. And he wasn't too good to do that, was he? 
He didn't go back home and say, no, look what they gave me to do. They know who I am. I'm not, I'm not going to do that. You don't hear that from Philip or any of the other seven that were chosen. Murmuring and complaint. I think sometimes every church has a complaint department. Seems like there's always somebody that's complaining about something. We had a lady in West Virginia. She was going to leave, leave the congregation because where she sat, the fans were going so high that she got cold. And I told her, Sister Alice, that's what we'll call her because that was her name. I said, if, if you'll just move over to the wall, you won't be underneath the fan and you won't be cold. Well, she said, I've sat here all my life. Okay. Stay there. See, it was so easy to cure, and to her, that was a real problem. Okay. Some are like that, but that's not you, is it? You're not like that, are you? Okay, good. Glad we got that settled. But a, mur a murmuring church is not going to grow, is it? I've seen a lot of them die and fall apart. One congregation, Johnny Edwards told us about a hundred years ago, the congregation divided in a, in a Bible class over whether we'd know our mothers in heaven. <coughs> and the side that thought that they would know their mother sat over here, and those that didn't think they would sat over here. What did Jesus say? We quoted John 13, 34. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I love you. Another congregation divided over, they're putting a new roof on the building. And some wanted shingles and some wanted tin. You know how they settle that, don't you? They put shingles on one side and tin on the other. And those who like the tin sat over here. And those who like the shingles sat over here. Give me a break. And they expect to go to heaven. One congregation divided when we had stoves, and I mean real stoves, in the auditorium to keep warm. They couldn't meet together. And so they had two coal piles out in front of the church building. Couldn't get along. We're not using out of the coal pile you use. You are kidding, aren't you? A few weeks later, somebody they came to services and they found somebody had driven a, sign, a, a stake in the ground with a sign on it that said, One Lord, One Faith, and Two Coal Pots. <laughs> People like that need a good, good talking to, don't they? Need to get over it, this complaining business. Philip was a table server but didn't complain about serving tables. He was asked to do something, and he did it. This was the first internal strife that the church had. Well, you say, what about Ananias and Sapphira? Well, that wasn't an internal strife, was it? They just simply lied, and they died. When they lied to God. The Grecian widows. I'll give them a little credit and just say they unintentionally were overlooked. And the seven men were put, put over, over that. To see that it was done. To see that it gets done. I was in a congregation, had three elders and about five or six deacons. And the very first preacher elders deacons meeting, it was the first one in that congregation, and one of the elders said, okay, boys, we asked you to do something last month and before I got there. And said, we want to find out what you, what you found out. Well, the first one said, well, uh, I was supposed to go see Sister so but I didn't get that done. And the second one said, well, yeah, I was supposed to do this, but I didn't get that done. Up, all four of them, I believe it was. And I'm telling you, there was a silence in that little room. I came home and I told Judy I never was so glad I wasn't a deacon in my life. <laughs> that elder said, after a pause, 
seemed like a half an hour. He said, boys, we gave you those jobs and we meant for you to do them. Don't let this happen again. Did they need to hear that? Yes, sir. What would have happened? Well, okay, didn't get her done, didn't get her done, didn't get her done. They need to do it. And we have here on the board that the church didn't turn into a fellowship hall, did it? They're going to unearth some of the church buildings in 100 or 200 years. Guys with the little shovels and the little toothbrushes and they're going to say, Whew, these churches had kitchens better than restaurants. And they do. They do. I've been in denominations. I think I remember Dee Dee, remember? Christian Church, New Winchester, Tinville, down here. New Winchester. And they were having a meeting and we visited them. It was hard to keep your mind on the, the woman preacher. Because you could smell the ham and the, and the coffee and all that coming up from the register below. That's what the churches are turned into today. But that wasn't the purpose for this, was it? Wasn't the purpose for that at all. When the problem was solved, the work ended. It was not an eternal welfare or a welcome wagon. Which a lot of people, that, that, that's what it's going to be. And you, did you know we could have a house full tonight if we did that? If you, didn't, if you put something else other than gospel meeting, how about gospel eating? Or festival or something like this. This friend's church down here has something, seems like every month. Some kind of a breakfast, chicken noodle dinner on Sunday. Everybody's welcome. I've thought about crashing their parties. Just see what's going on. But if you take that away... Somebody said a hundred years ago they have the serve the, the tea and the ice cream and the chicken and that they are as uh, weak as the tea as cold as the ice cream and as dead as the chicken because you take the food away and the people will leave. If that's how you're drawing them one boy over in Ohio he said now, uh, he was on their softball team the Baptist Church softball team <laughs> He said, I only have to go twice a month and I go on Wednesday night because you're in and out within an hour. I have to go twice a month to play on the team. Is that how they got him there? The only reason he was there? I'm sure he was really something, a real advertisement for that, for that congregation. Philip was a table server. And the cup that Jesus talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 wasn't a cup of soup, was it? Or a cup of coffee. Even the Lord's people, they'll, they'll have their, what's the, annex building attached to the auditorium. And some of them have a sign, do not bring food or drink into the auditorium. Now, now that's not happening. They're bringing their coffee and their donuts into the Bible classes. You think, you think, now, they didn't see that happening when it first started. But that's what is going to happen. But it didn't happen here, did it? Philip was a table server. And the result found in verse 7. When you have a problem and you cure the problem, the church will grow. It's when the problem continues and continues and things are said and things are done and strife separates the congregation and before long you'll be selling this building if we allow that to happen oh it couldn't happen here one brother told me he said brother Hayfley six weeks ago I would have said this could have never happened we were in perfect harmony we were working together and then the devil reared his head and Bam! Splitting over the most ridiculous things. Philip was the table server. 
But also in his resume, he was a man of good report. Verse 3 was one of the qualifications. Man of good report. You know, it's more important to be salt than it is to serve it. We are the salt of the earth. Do I recognize that? Do I recognize what I am as the salt of the earth? I can heal a wound. I can preserve the work if I will. But too many, oh, I don't want to get my nose in there and get it knocked off. No, you have a responsibility to keep peace in the church. And a man or a woman of good report will do that because he doesn't love himself. He loves the Lord more. Would you be willing to do that? Oh, brother and sister, so-and-so, they're fighting. Oh, I don't want to get involved in that. Two brothers are fighting. Oh, I don't want... You know about it. You need to do something about it. Somebody said, why didn't the elders do something? They may not know. They may not know what you know. Do not hesitate. Do not delay. You can't walk in darkness and send the light, can you? In that same passage in Matthew chapter 5, where he says we're the salt of the earth, he also says you are the light of the world. You. Oh, I'm not that important. Well, the Lord thinks you are. Or have we pulled the, the light string? And walking in darkness. That won't get it, will it? Just being here three times a, a week or every night of a gospel meeting doesn't mean I'm doing what all the Lord wants me to do. Philip didn't run for this office, did he? We know what that's all about in this time of year, don't we? Running for an office wasn't what he was all about. He was chosen because he met the qualifications. I wonder, would I have been chosen? Would I have been chosen? Hmm. How am I doing? Why weren't the sloppy and the lazy and the careless individuals chosen? One sister said, you know, we ought to have... Uh, well, I can't remember her name. My head sister so and so said, we ought to have her teach the little kids class just to get her to come. Is that who you want teaching your little babies? Somebody you've got to force them into the, into the work? What kind of a teacher is she going to be when she didn't want to be there in the first place? And this is the, this is the mother who had two daughters, I believe, at the time, and Judy was teaching their class, and she had the gall to come up to Judy and say, my kids aren't getting anything out of your class. Well, it's pretty hard when you're only there once a month. How about going to class in school every other day? Would you have trouble passing? Yeah, you would. They, they didn't have their lessons didn't know where the class was, didn't know what they'd been studying. Sure, they were lost. Not getting anything out of it. Okay. Why weren't these kinds of individuals chosen? Why weren't they? Would you hire somebody like that for your business? Oh, he just sits around all day, doesn't do anything. Yeah, we need to get him. No. You want a job done, who do you get to do it? You get somebody who's busy. Not somebody who's lazy. And again, how about our Bible classes? Is that how, is that, is that how the we get, get our teachers? Well, she's not been here for a well, let's sign. Let's sign her up and tell her she's on the list to teach the, the little one's class. I don't think that works. That's not a person of good report, is it? I don't think so either. Either. We need people of good report. A good name. What did Solomon say in 22 and verse 1 of the book of Proverbs? A good name is rather to be chosen than what? Great riches. How you doing? How you doing on this name business? Your reputation. You got one. You know you have a reputation? Sometimes it's not what we think we are. 
Our friends have a whole other idea about us, our reputation. Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 1, A good name is better than precious ointment. Hmm. A good name. The Lord thinks so too. And that's what He was talking about when Jesus said in Matthew 5.16, Let your light so shine. Your example, your influence on others. Philip had a good report. How's mine? Philip also was a man that was full of the Holy Spirit. One of the qualifications. He was bearing the fruit of the Spirit. Boy, you talk about camping on a verse. You could camp right there for several days, couldn't you? Love and joy and peace and so on. Wow, what a series of sermons. A man full of the Holy Spirit, and he was. He performed miracles after they laid hands on him. After they had been appointed by the apostles, they laid their hands on him. In Acts chapter 8 and verse 18, Simon saw that through the laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Spirit was given. And you know what he wanted to do, don't you? Simon wanted to buy it. Give me this power. He was a magician and they thought he was the great power of God. But he wasn't and he knew it. He knew a miracle when he saw one and he knew he wasn't performing them. How are we filled with the Spirit? Teenage class ought to remember that from a couple of years ago. Psalm 119, verse 11. Thy word have I what? Hid in my heart. Why? That I might not sin against thee. You put God's word here. You will know the rules. You will know the danger signs. You will know the warning signs when you are tested. I guarantee you when you got your driver's license you learned the signs, didn't you? Why? Because you wanted to drive. How badly do you want to go to heaven? Have you learned the warning signs? The danger signs? Yeah, all I know is there, but I think I can take this curve at 90. <laughs> really? You wouldn't do that with a car, but we do it against God's law. We break His laws and expect Him to just overlook it. He's not going to. I need to study to show myself approved unto whom? Unto God. And if you're not taking the time, you're not making the time, you're not using your time some part of the day to study God's Word, Shame on you. And it shows. We used to be known as Bible encyclopedias. Christians. When your granddad would take his Bible out to the field with it. And when he took a break at noon, my granddad had uh, a quart jar full of buttermilk and a couple of pieces of cornbread. That was his lunch. Yeah, and I know maybe a lot of you like, he put, put the jar in the, in the creek, kept it cool, and the cornbread under the tree in the shade, and his Bible, and when he stopped. And you know, one, one of the, I don't know if there's a word, one of the funnest times, one of the best times of my life, when we get on his little international harvester tractor, and we drive around to the Gorley store, and we'd get an RC Coca-Cola and a moon pie and there'd be Bible discussions going on. And you know what happened? People from the Methodist and the Baptist churches came to the meetings. They did. And some of them obeyed the gospel. They did. And they would go... To Members of the church there in Sycamore would go to the, uh, the d d denominational meetings. And they say, I heard your preacher preach and questioned them on that. 
their neighbors. But the Bible says, see? See how that's done? Sure you do. If we are filled with the Spirit, we will want to go teach. We will want to tell others the wonderful story of love. Full of the Holy Spirit. But you must be hungering and thirsty. Thirsty. I was hungry a couple of hours ago, but I'm not anymore, Julie. Uh, and you know when I'm hungering and thirsting, I somehow find the table? Yeah. I find where the food is. If I'm hungering and thirsting after righteousness and seeking first the kingdom of God, I'll find my Bible. I won't have to find it. I'll know where it is, won't I? A friend of ours said, if you have a tool you don't know where it is, you don't have it. If you don't know where your Bible is, and I know you're going to misplace it. And the older I get, the more I do that. I don't know how it got there. I didn't do it. But you know what I'm talking about. Hungering and thirsting after... And that's not over anybody's head, is it? More, more. Also on Philip's resume, he was a man of wisdom. He was a man that one of the men that was over this work. Elders must be wise. They are overseers, aren't they? And I want them keeping a watch out for me. I want them to tell me you can't do that. You need to change this in your life. If that is necessary, I need to hear that. I never went to my folks, my dad or my mother, either one of them, and said, you know, I haven't been spanked in a couple of weeks. <laughs> they knew the time, didn't they? And it was necessary. And so do elders. They do this every week. Watching for our souls. And that's good. And Philip was one of the men that was over this great work. And they must be wise in so doing. Not a haughty spirit, but a kind spirit. Not looking down on people. Those who need help. But thankful for God that it, to God that it is not you that needs the help. Be ye kind one to another, Paul says. And Jesus admonished the same throughout His teaching. And His wonderful example for us. Wisdom is needed in dealing, dealing with folks, isn't it? It sure is. We need to be wise in our dealings with others. Walk circumspectly, Paul says, Ephesians 5. Not as fools, but as wise. Walk cautiously. Be wise in your dealings. In your treating of others. Because the wise build on the rock, don't they? The wise man builds on the rock. Who, what does the fool build on? The devil will deceive you. And not tell you that you're walking and building on quicksand. I've seen that happen in the movies. Somebody gets into the quicksand and usually they, they escape, but sometimes they don't. And when we build on the sand, we have better change. The wise build on the rock and we must be prepared. In Matthew chapter 25, and verse 10, the five wise virgins, they made preparation. I need to be making preparation. Do I know when my death date is? We talked about that earlier. Do you know when yours is? And you're thinking, well, it's, I'm feeling really good. 
when we lived in San Antonio, Texas, there was a six foot two handsome young man with a two, two little children. He told his mom and dad on uh, Friday that he got a complete physical and the doctor said, son, you've got the body of a 20 year old. He was 40 years old. We came to church Sunday morning and they got a call. Worst news they could have received. Their son was dead. Heart attack. He didn't think when he got up that morning, and he did get up that morning, went down and helped his children get the, their breakfast ready. He said, I'm not feeling swell. I'll be able to go lay down for a while and then get ready for service. They went up to get him, and he was gone. Just say it. And look in the obituary column. It's not all only 90, 100 year old people that are dying, are they? I must be prepared for eternity. What I understand, eternity is a good long time. And I better, better be ready. Then last on his resume, Philip was the evangelist. In Acts chapter 21 and verse 8, Luke records that. Philip the evangelist. Well, what about him? Well, in, in that same verse, Luke tells us that they came, Paul and all his entourage came to Philip's house and they stayed. And they stayed a great many days, verse 10 says. He kept the preacher. You know, let's back up here a little bit. I don't know if Paul had to come to town and a lot of places he'd been chased out of and people were looking for him to kill him and he's going to be in my house, they may get me too. Philip wasn't afraid, was he? Was he? That's what it takes, courage, to preach the Word. How important is the preaching? I'm not ashamed of the Gospel of Christ for it is the power of God unto salvation. That's powerful, isn't it? It's the dynamite of God that blows us out of darkness into the light. Romans 2 and verse 16, very next chapter. God will judge the secrets of men by the gospel. Jesus had already said that earlier in John chapter 12, verses 47 and 48. It's my word that will judge. If we didn't have the word, if we didn't have the word, where would we be? Would you know what to do? Would you know to be baptized? Well, Jesus said, let's say, a lot of preachers are preaching, you must be born again. And they don't have a clue what he's talking about. And neither would I if that was the only verse. John chapter 3 and verse 3. To get into the kingdom? How? Born again how? Well, Nicodemus said, I've got to go back to my mother's womb. No. It is a spiritual birth. And without the book of Acts, we've got problems, don't we? which shows us how we're born again of water and the Spirit, John 3 and verse 5. Preaching is important. Faith comes by hearing. If we don't have faith, if we don't have the Word, there is no faith. Denominational people treat preachers. Well, what do they wear before their name? They have their sign, their sign out front. And what's it say before the preacher's name? Reverend, How long would it take you to get the name off the sign if we put that up there? You come to church Sunday, Reverend J.R. Blunger. He'd jump up there and knock it down, wouldn't he? They'll ask you in a funeral home, well, what do you want to put on the, on the card for the funeral? Reverend? No. People like that are not table servers. They want to be served. We want to be people who preach the gospel and are willing to serve others. Table servers today get a tip. I'm giving you a tip now. You want to be great in God's kingdom? We mentioned the other night James and John, the sons of Zebedee, that their mother came before Jesus and said, well, my sons, one on your left hand, one on your right hand when you come into the kingdom. 
they were discussing as they walked behind Jesus. Who's the greatest? Who's the greatest? And Jesus knew what they were doing. What are you talking about? Haven't I shown you? You exalt yourself, you will be abased. You want to, you want to be glorified? Here is not where it's at. You want to be great in the kingdom? You be a table server as it were. Philip went to Samaritan. Did you know the Jews didn't know a good Samaritan? When Jesus talked about the goods of what? They want to deal with them. But Philip did. Philip went to the Samaritans, the half breed Jews, as it were. In Acts chapter 8, verse 5 through 8, he preached Jesus to them. In verses 12 and 13, those that heard the word believed and were baptized. Verse 13, Simon also believed. And he was baptized. What did that make him? It made him a Christian, didn't it? Sure did. Philip went where they were. And that's what we'll have to do. As we said, the Jews never knew a good Samaritan. And that's it. I guess I've just stopped everything, didn't I, Tim? Got to retrain me, bud. But that's it. Philip, the table server. See what he was? Did you see what he did? Do you think he thought it was worth it? Do you think he thinks it was worth it now? When this life on earth is over and our soul goes to heaven, simply by doing God's will, living the kind of life that you should live, abstaining from every appearance of evil. Yes, the devil's going to make it hard. He's going to make a test out of your life. But you can win. You can win. And when, as we've told you before, Paul would say, so say I now again. If you live to be my age, and you can look back, and you will not have to regret, as so many are, what they have done in the past. Psalm 51 and verse 3, My sin is ever before me. Don't do it. Don't say you haven't been warned because you have. Not just this week, but as members of this congregation we get warnings all the time, don't we? How are we doing? Let's be willing as Philip to be a table server. If you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, you need to know that before honor comes service. It was true with Jesus. Peter said, oh you, oh, you can't die on the cross. That's not going to happen. You're not going to die. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Jesus had to serve God. Not my will, but thine be done. And he did. <coughs> he endured the cross because he saw the joy that was coming. And so can we. If you need to respond, let it be right now. We're going to stand and sing the song, All Things Are Ready, Come to the Feast. Don't let the devil bind you to your pew, to your station, but break the chains that are binding you and do as millions have done. Be saved tonight by being baptized into the one that died for you. While we stand, Bill, while we sing, won't you?